Welcome uh, to this video. We're going to talk about chapter 23 measuring a nation's income and then we're going to discuss about the quick check multiple choice. Remember, this is a book of Gregory Mankiw Principles of Economics. So first, if the price of a hot dog is $2 and the price of a hamburger is $4, then 30 hot dogs contribute as much to GDP as hamburgers. So first, uh, those are the options, and first keep in mind that we have that the price of the hot dog is $2, the price for a hamburger is $4, and we already know the quantity for, 30, uh, for hot dogs, which is 30. Then, if we split the GDP in hot dog, should be uh, price of hot dog times quantity of hot dog. If we want to know the GDP for hamburgers should be price of hamburger times Q hamburgers, which is the quantity. Then we know that the price of hot dog is two and then the quantity is three. So then we already have 60, right, as the GDP of hot dog. Now we have this one, which is the GDP for hamburger, exactly the same as these. And then imagine that this is the 60, which is the, the GDP. And then we want to know what should be the quantity of hamburgers to achieve this, uh, this contribution, okay, this proportion for that. So then, which should be uh, the quantity of hamburgers that contribute the same as 30? So it should be 60 equal 4 times the hamburger. If we move this one over, because this is multiplying 4, and then we have 60 over 4. So then naturally we know that the contribution of 30 hot dogs is exactly the same as the contribution of 15 hamburgers. How come? Because of the hamburgers, the value is double than the hot dog, so we just need half of the quantity of hot dogs to achieve the same value for GDP. Then, Angus, uh, the sheep farmer, sells wool for uh, to Barnaby, the knitter, for $20. Barnaby makes two sweaters, each of which has a market price of 40 Colette buys one of them while the other remains on the shelf of Barnaby's store to be sold later. What is the GDP here? So we have these four options. Then first, we know that the price of wool should be 20. The quantity of sweater should be two. And the price for the final good of sweater should be 40. So then, Naturally, for that economy, the GDP is e consisted in the price of sweater times quant quantity of sweater. So we have 2 times 40, right? Then we have 2, uh, the price, uh, sorry, 2, which is the quantity of sweater, and 40, which is the price. So then the GDP sweater is 8. Why? Remember, even if we just have uh, one acquisition of this sweater, remember that GDP value, all the quantity of goods and services to the, uh, at the market value. So it's like we assume as Barnaby buy himself this sweater with this value of the sweater in the market. So then the GDP of sweater should be 80. Third, which of the following does not add to US GDP? Air France buys a plane from Boeing, the US aircraft manufacturer. B, General Motors builds a new auto factory in North Carolina. The city of New York pays a salary to a policeman and last, the federal government sends a social security check to your grandmother. First, this one Air France buys a plane uh, from Boeing, the US aircraft manufacturer. It will be included to GDP in net exports. So naturally, it adds value. 
to the GDP. Then, General Motors builds a new auto factory in North Carolina. Naturally, it will be included to GDP as investment in equipment, in factors of production. Then, the city of New York pays a salary to policemen. Remember, when uh, it belongs to the public sector, when you pay or the government pays a uh, salary, it goes immediately uh, to the government expenditures. And then the federal government sends a social security check to your mother, grandmother. Naturally, it belongs uh, to GDP in some way. However, it does not add any value. Actually, it will subtract instead of add it. Then. The federal government's and social securities check to your grandmother is considered like as a negative uh, tariff, which should be kind of a subsidy. Then, an American buys a pair of shoes manufactured in Italy. How do they use national income accounts to treat the transaction? Net exports and GDP both rise, net exports and GDP both fall, net exports fall while GDP is unchanged, or net exports are unchanged while GDP rises. First, naturally we need to know that there is an increase of consumption from the guy, the American guy, which which uh, bought these uh, shoes, this pair of shoes, and naturally it increases at the same time imports. So then naturally we will see an impact if everybody, everything remains the same as decrease in net exports. Then naturally the GDP does not change. So for this reason the net exports fall because of the increase of the import while GDP is unchanged for the compensation with increase in consumption, which is the largest component of GDP, consumption, investment, government purchases, net exports. Well, it is not like uh, maybe all the countries, but maybe it's like a rule, uh, most of the time, almost like 100% of the time, is we have this kind of proportion. So as you can see here, the consumption for the United States for, I guess that it was for uh, 2000. 12, I don't remember, we have 71% for consumption. Then, the last one, if all quantities produced rise by 10% and all prices fall by 10%, which of the following occurs? So then, real GDP rises by 10% while nominal GDP falls by 10%, or real GDP rises by 10% while nominal GDP is unchanged, or real GDP is unchanged while well, nominal GDP rises by 10% or real GDP is unchanged while well, nominal GDP falls by 10%. So first, we know that GDP we can consider as the identity price times quantity. So here, if the quantity uh, rises by the 10% and prices um, went down for 10%, so what's going on? Imagine with a numerical example, maybe should be better to grasp it. So here we have the price one with a decrease of 10%. So we have a decrease of one, so we have nine. For the quantity of 10 plus one, which should be the 10%. So we have GDP is equal to price one time Q1 in the first period. So we have 100. In period two, so we have nine times 11. So we end up with 99. So then, real GDP, uh, first we can assume that GDP 1 is almost the same as GDP 2. So we can say that nominal GDP uh, is unchanged. What happened with GDP? Base year, imagine base year, uh, the year 1. So uh, that situation, so we have the GDP for 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 period two, we should be price one times Q2, so we have 10 times uh, 11, and remember, base year is exactly the same, real GDP and nominal GDP. So then, it's exactly the same. So here we have, 
what is the increase? GDP uh, 2, real GDP 2 nominal minus 1 times uh, 100, which is the change, a percentual change. So here we have 110 over 100 minus 1 times uh, 100 so we have 10 percent so at the end of the day we can see that real GDP rises by 10 percent while nominal GDP is unchanged so I hope it has worth for your knowledge for this quick uh, check multiple choice and you understand better or you understood better this idea so hopefully see you the next video bye bye